also why you think candies taste sweet and oranges or lemon tastes sour. Salt tastes obviously salty and neem tastes bitter. Now the taste factors of articles depend on its acid and base content. Yes, there are acids and bases in our food. And not just food, but soaps and detergents, fertilizers, explosives, dyes. Everything has acids, bases and salts. Even in our human body, there's acid in our stomach. Next, our blood is slightly basic. Now, proteins in our body are made up of amino acids and our DNA is also basic. So let's find out what are these acids, bases and salts. Sometimes the most interesting thing about any topic is learning about its history. How did our ancestors view it? What did they think it was? It is quite fascinating to look at how each successive scientist build on the ideas and breakthroughs of those before. Now we already know about the molecular behaviors of acids and bases, but let me tell you something very interesting about the discovery of acids and bases. Way before scientists could discover about atoms and molecules, they were able to identify acids and bases by studying their reactions. That's some achievement. In fact, in 1661, Anglo-Irish natural philosopher, chemist, physicist and inventor Robert Boyle discovered the qualities that can be used to easily distinguish between acids and bases. Two sets of chemicals without performing complicated tests. Did you know some examples of common acids are citric acid from certain fruits and veggies, notably citrus fruit, ascorbic acid, that is vitamin C as from certain fruits, vinegar which contains 5% acetic acid, carbonic acid used for carbonation of soft drinks, lactic acid found in buttermilk. Now let me give you some examples of common bases, detergents, soap, household ammonia, etc. That's two of our basics covered. Now we know their properties and a few examples about them. Let's see if we can define acids and bases. Now we've already understood the basic characteristics of acids and bases and with some simple tests we can distinguish between them as well. So let's look at acids and bases on an atomic level. A long time ago, actually in 1884 to be precise, a Swedish chemist by the name of Svante August Arrhenius was busy studying the electrical properties of chemicals when put in water. It was during these studies that he noticed that when certain compounds were put into aqueous or water-based solutions, they produced hydrogen ions, also called protons. He termed these compounds as acids. Arrhenius defined acids as compounds that produce hydrogen ions in an aqueous solution. And this process was called acid dissociation. And this dissociation expression for generic acids can be written as HA where H is the hydrogen ion and A is the negatively charged particle. Therefore, can say that HA gives H plus ions plus A minus ions. Now, these H plus ions are responsible for the common characteristics of acids. But let me tell you something. Hydrogen ions cannot exist alone in a solution. Strange. But then what do they do? So, they combine with water molecules and exist as hydronium ions, that is, H3O plus. Now, hydrogen ion and hydronium ions are interchangeable terms. Therefore, to keep things simple, it is represented only as H plus ions. Now, let me explain this with an example. When hydrochloric acid, that is HCl, is dissolved in water, the hydrogen atom and the chlorine atom dissociate from each other. And due to this release of hydrogen ions in the solution, the concentration of H plus ions increases which reacts with water to form hydronium ion, making the solution acidic. And since the compound obeys the Arrhenius rule for acids, keep in mind that HCl is classified as an Arrhenius acid. Now, what about bases? Arrhenius defined bases as compounds that produce hydroxide ions when in water. This equation may be written for the generic Arrhenius base BOH where OH is the hydroxide ion and B is the positive ion attached to the hydroxide as BOH gives B plus and OH minus ions. For example, sodium hydroxide that is NaOH when dissolved in an aqueous solution dissociates and releases sodium and hydroxide ions in the solution. 
Due to this, the hydroxide concentration in the solution increases and therefore sodium hydroxide is an arrhenius base. However, many bases are insoluble in water. The bases which are soluble in water are called alkalis. In other words, we can say that all alkalis are bases, but all bases are not alkalis. We can measure the strength or weakness of an acid or a base with the help of an indicator. Now what is an indicator? An indicator is a substance that changes color when it comes in contact with another substance. So this color changing nature acts like a response. So we have indicators that tell us how acidic or basic a substance is. Now strength of an acid depends on its ionization capacity and as the number of hydrogen ions in the solution increases, the acidity of the solution increases. Therefore, a universal indicator, which is a mixture of several indicators, shows different colors at different concentration level of hydrogen ions in a solution. Now, you get indicators either in liquid form, where you just put a drop of an indicator on a substance and see what color it turns or you get it in the form of paper and when you put the paper inside a liquid it changes its color to show how acidic or basic the liquid is example is litmus paper usually litmus turns red in an acidic solution blue in a basic solution and green when the solution is neutral now, do you remember the experiment of neutralization between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide? How the colorless phenolphthalein changed its color? There we used phenolphthalein as a liquid indicator. It changed color depending upon the acidity or basicity of the solution. And three most commonly used liquid indicators to test acids and bases are methyl red, methyl orange and phenolphthalein. And to find out whether a solution is acidic, basic or neutral, you can compare the final color of an indicator with a chart that shows what different colors indicate. Now, in science, we cannot use this change in color to determine the strength of an acid or base. So we need to put in some numbers, right? And there is a way to do that. It's called pH. Tutor me for more amazing video lectures. Download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.